Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the June Keys Penguin Habitat. My name's Michelle. I'm joined today with Dana, and we are giving the dinner for our penguins. We have 20 penguins here, ranging in age from less than a year all the way up to 16. Now, a popular question that we're often asked is, why do we do training here, and what do we feed these animals? Well, training's done so that we can take better care of our animals, and what we feed the penguins is a mixture of herring and capelin. Now you'll notice that uh, we aren't on mic when we're feeding because there's a lot of talking back and forth between Dana and I telling how much each penguin's getting because we do keep track of it every day. Every morning we come in uh, if they are on medicine or different types of uh, vitamins we'll go ahead and give that in the morning and then in the afternoon we'll give them another little feed. Hi Astaire. And then we'll go ahead and give them their dinner, and then we'll put some mats out for them overnight. Now, if you were watching uh, earlier, you might have noticed that we had some of their nest boxes. If you're looking at our exhibit, these holes actually go into what we call our penguin condos. And those are their nest boxes. And they were pretty much cordoned off, so the penguins couldn't get to them. Now... I was talking a little bit about it earlier, but my mic cut out, and so I'm going to finish up what I was saying. Now, if our animals are on uh, any type of medication, we make sure that they are sequestered in the main exhibit and can't go into their condos because we do have some penguins sitting on some chicks. Now, the way that penguins feed chicks is that they regurgitate food that they have had in their stomach digesting. Now, that's all well and good, but if you have a penguin that is taking some type of medication, you don't want that medication going to the chick. And so we actually block off their nest boxes until they digest that food completely, and then we will go ahead and let them back in. And normally that takes five to six hours, and so that's what we were doing this morning. So if you are watching, we actually have a, a penguin cam, so if you are ever at home and you want to see what our penguins are doing at any time, go ahead and go to explore.org. We have uh, people that watch our penguins more than I watch my penguins, and I'm here every day, it seems like. But we actually have a camera that you can watch what the penguins are doing every day. And so they'll notice that certain nest boxes are corned off. Now, we do have some chicks. We are cautiously optimistic on their health. You will always have a uh, Kind of like a 50-50 shot. Out in the wild, their mortality rate is quite high. It's one of the reasons why uh, penguins are uh, such an endangered and threatened animal. And so we want to make sure that our penguins are doing quite well. So we keep them pretty much sequestered. We don't have any type of uh, encounters going on at this time because we want to make sure that the stress level on our penguins and the penguin mom and dads are doing quite well. Now, if you're noticing Dana feeding, some penguins would take a herring. Some of them would throw it back at her. Well, penguins are like feeding three-year-olds, and they live to be about 20 to 25 years old. So just think of that. Those that have three-year-olds right now, think of them acting like that for 20 years. That's what we deal with on a daily basis. Some penguins like to have their fish given to them with the head to the right. Some penguins like the head to be to the left. If you're like our penguin whatever, she likes them tossed to her with the belly going towards her beak first. So it's all pretty much a remembering game for us, knowing which one is which and who is doing what. Now, like I said, we are in the breeding mode right now. Right before this, we went through migration, and in just a few uh, months, we'll be going into their molting phase. Now, molting for penguins is what's known as an explosive molt. That means that they lose all their feathers all at once, except for those downy under uh, feathers, and that's pretty uh, strenuous for the animals, so you'll see them stay up on deck quite a bit. Now, a lot of times people wonder, where's the ice? Well, these are temperate penguins, and that means that they like the sun just like you and I do. They're found off the coast of Chile, and what's interesting about that is that there is a cold jet stream that runs just at the base, and so when they get too warm, they'll just pop in the water. And just like our exhibit mimics that area, our water temperature in here is around 55 degrees, so it's quite chilly. So if they ever do get a little too warm, they will actually uh, just go into the water, get cooled off, and then come back.
Again, this is where the penguins, uh, being very, very picky on their food, if it's turned the wrong way or if the head is slightly bent, they will not eat this. So getting back to the malt, this is, we kind of live our lives through the penguin a year. So after the malt, they'll go ahead and get their beautiful new coats. Now you might have seen that one of these penguins do not look like the rest of the penguins. And I think it's the one right in the center, swimming right in front of you. And that is our juvenile penguin, Gats. Now Gats has a, sil a white chest and a silver uh, back. And if you look at him, he looks a little bit different, and that's because, like I said, he's a juvenile. He doesn't have that double black band that all the adult penguins do. But after he goes through that molt, you will actually see him turn out to be just like everybody else. And if you notice, he doesn't have a band like all the others. It's because we can tell him apart easily. But all these bands denote each animal. It's almost like a social security number for him. We are actually part of the North American Magellanic Penguin Society. So we are one big colony in North America and we are a subset of that colony. So each penguin has its own little ID number so that if we needed to switch penguins between the colonies we could. And that's an easy way that we can do that. We can do it to promote good genetics. We want to make sure that uh, the penguins in our care are nice and healthy. Well, hello, Matson. You coming to say hello? Matson is one that likes to tug on, on wristbands as well as vests. Now, it may look cute, but penguin beaks are actually quite strong. They are good for penguins because they actually have very dense feathers. They're about 70 feathers uh, per square inch. But when you're putting that up against our skin, we kind of lose every single time. So Dana is, getting, um, is uh, learning how to kind of build up a relationship with the penguins. And so the penguins are coming up, but they're like, eh. like I said, we keep our penguins extremely well fed. And they're just getting uh, used to uh, Dana as well as kind of indoctrinating her into their society. Now, up on the top right next to Dana, that's Matson and Lily, and that is their nest box. And so they tend to get a little territorial at times, uh, but for the most part, they're pretty good about us being all around here. Well, at this point, we're going to go ahead and sign off. I'd like to say thank you all for coming to the aquarium because your admission does help us take care of all of our penguins and all of our animals. So for myself and Dana and all the animals here, we hope you enjoy your day at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and we hope to see you again real soon.